In the meantime, I want to pause and take a local view of this because our parent company operates a whole host of local television stations across the country. Scripps has 60 of them in 42 markets, and every day reporters there are producing important, useful content that gives light on how coronavirus is impacting every corner of our country. So we'll start tonight where, to feature some of these reportings, uh, its impact, its the coverage that we're seeing on a local level. You're not going to find this anywhere else tonight. Over the next few minutes, you'll hear from seven of our stations across the country, beginning in New York, on the ground in New Rochelle, where the National Guard is moving in. Westchester County is at the epicenter of the local outbreak. Here in New Rochelle, they have over 100 confirmed cases. A three public schools now closed down for two weeks as the National Guard is prepared to move in. This is literally a matter of uh, life and death. Because of that sobering statement, Governor Andrew Cuomo has called up the National Guard to mobilize in New Rochelle, the epicenter of the local outbreak, specifically delivering food and helping clean. New Rochelle at this point is probably the largest cluster in the United States. Which is why the state has mandated a one mile containment area around the Young Israel Synagogue, where many congregants were first infected. Another story on the West Coast where our sister station in San Diego is on the ground reporting on the first of the American passengers to come off the Grand Princess cruise ship. 21 people on board confirmed to have the coronavirus. Base officials have been working since Monday to get everything ready for this arrival and dealing with a situation they have now become very familiar with. In February, they housed evacuees from China who also had to be quarantined. And now they will be housing the passengers from the Grand Princess cruise ship. Last night, one of the planes landed at Miramar, carrying some of those passengers. The ship itself pulled into Oakland on Monday. The ship had been kept out to sea after at least 20 people had tested positive for the coronavirus. And now those on board have been split into different groups, depending on where they will stay during their federally mandated 14-day quarantine. During their stay at Miramar, they will continue to be monitored, and if they show any signs of the virus, health officials say they will be moved to another location. For regular air passengers, airports want you to know they're stepping up cleaning. That includes places like Billings, Montana. We put up additional hand sanitizers everywhere. We have our crews are going through and doing an extra good job of wiping down all hard surfaces, you know, the arms on the chairs, the doors, everything, any place where people might touch. Watch, watching those down with disinfectant. So we're trying to keep the terminals as you know, spick and span as we can so that you know, there's not any impetus for people to think that they're going to get sick at the airport. But case after case of the coronavirus is decimating the cruise industry. The federal government now telling people don't cruise. But at cruise ports in Fort Lauderdale and Tampa, Florida, officials are trying to demonstrate they're doing their best. Services like this where a lot of folks are touching and leaning against is the perfect place where they're going to be spraying this product. They say it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria as well as viruses and they are confident it will protect passengers. In a place known for tight quarters. This isn't a time to panic. Concerns over getting on a cruise are continuing to grow, especially after the State Department told certain folks to avoid it. If I was a uh, uh, cruise passenger and I'm not 80 years or older with some of the conditions that the CDC has outlined very clearly, I wouldn't uh, have any problem uh, taking a cruise. Tuesday, Paul Anderson, the CEO and president of Port Tampa Bay, let us watch the port's cleaning procedures, including the newest step, a product called Impact. It's very effective against um, bacteria, fungus, and viral agents. It's sprayed on high-use surfaces, creating a thin barrier that on a molecular level looks like sharp road spikes. It's 99.9% .9 effective and is combined with the port's cleaning procedures already in place. Okay, so those are the cleaning procedures for airports and cruise ports, but what about our homes? Our sister station in West Palm Beach has a unique take. You can disinfect your home or office with any of the EPA approved cleaners for coronavirus. Professional cleaning companies say the key is to disinfect commonly touched areas, and there may be some you haven't even thought of. On a regular day at work, Ginny Figueroa is cleaning up crime scenes. Majority of them is biohazards, suicides, homicides. But lately, technicians at Trauma Solutions of South Florida are also suiting up to disinfect for the coronavirus. We do it for the coronavirus also, just so when we leave, we can take that off and we don't take it out with us wherever we're at. 
They use a disinfectant solution, but if you're trying to clean at home or at work, Figueroa says a bleach solution mixed with water will also work. Bottles or anything that's on your counter, wipe it all down first, move it, and then clean your countertop and put it back. Every surface has to be wiped down, handles, doorknobs, anything that you would actually touch would need to be wiped down. Now you may clean these on the regular already, but Figueroa says it's important to reach the spots that aren't part of your routine. Refrigerator handles, uh, cabinet handles in the kitchen, you wouldn't think to touch to clean them. At the office, you guessed it, keyboards, mouses, desks and laptops. Waiting rooms, um, tables, the magazines I would probably toss, stuff like that. If only we can find some cleaning wipes for a little cheaper. Let's go to our reporters in Colorado Springs, Colorado. They sent a reporter to a firehouse to talk to first responders about how they'd handle a call involving potential coronavirus. Okay, it does meet the criteria for uh, corona, so uh, make sure you wear the appropriate PPE. A medical call activating coronavirus protocol in Colorado Springs. To make sure that we're staying safe, but also keeping you safe in the process. This is what you might see when firefighter paramedics arrive on scene. Masks that seal against their face, goggles, full splash gowns, and gloves that seal over the sleeves of the gown. Then only one member of the team will initially approach the patient to limit exposure. The gear is proven protection for close contact with potentially contagious patients. Firefighters say when you see it, don't panic. You're going to see us come into houses, you're going to see us go to your neighbor's house, you're going to see us go into businesses even, dressed in all of this gear. And it doesn't mean that there's a confirmed case there, it just means that we're taking the universal precautions that are out there. It's now standard gear on trucks. It's to prevent the spread in the community. All right, let's close out this quick tour in Utah. You know, in some industries, more than half of workers don't get paid time off if they're sick. It's a problem around the country, including in Salt Lake City. Utah has more of these workers than most places. 159,000 Utahns work in leisure and hospitality. Those trade workers include over 76,000 retail sales clerks and cashiers. These numbers may be most likely to cause trouble in the current crisis. Utah's three lowest paying occupational groups work in food prep and service, personal care and service, and in building and grounds cleaning and maintenance. And this chart shows those who make less are less likely to have sick leave. Bears repeating. This may be scary, the spread of coronavirus. Health officials around the world are concerned. There are real worries about whether our hospitals are prepared to handle the number of patients who might need treatment. But remember, the overwhelming majority of people who get coronavirus are going, going to be okay. In China, we believe more than three quarters of cases had only mild symptoms. And remember, we have natural defense mechanisms in our immune system. So stay vigilant, listen to official advice. Most importantly, wash your hands. Always warm water, 20 seconds, lots of soap. That'll help you stay healthy. Still ahead for us here on The Y. Senator Bernie Sanders facing a lot of questions as Joe Biden widens his lead in the 2020 primary race. But Sanders is asking some questions of his own about what happens to his supporters if he's not in the picture anymore. We'll talk about what's happening with our senior politics editor, Andrew Rafferty, next.